So here is the, uh, the dough after it's been sitting um, for about eight hours. Uh, usually I do this uh, through the night, so it's uh, had its first rise, uh, and it should be about double in size, should look kind of a little puffy, uh, sort of like that. Uh, and the technique now um, is two things. One, we didn't really need it, you'll remember, that we just uh, mixed the ingredients together with just, a, I guess, a little bit of initial kneading. Um, and the auto-lease process of the glutens uh, being formed by the movement of the air, and I don't quite actually understand all the chemistry, but it basically needs itself. But, but a really helpful technique is called the stretch and fold. So what you're gonna do here is grab a portion of your dough and stretch it and fold it back into the middle. And you're gonna work your way around the dough and it's gonna be quite sticky and slack um, because it's kind of this big puffy ball. And here you're, you're knocking the air out of it and stretch, fold, stretch, fold, and you'll feel the gluten build up in it quite quickly. Within five to 10 stretch and folds, you'll feel kind of a, a difference in the texture of the dough. Um, it'll feel more like a working dough. Um, so just stretching and folding, kind of making a ball. Um, and then I kind of clean up my bowl with the sticky bits of the inside to kind of save on the cleaning of the bowl later. And once you've got that bowl kind of, ball kind of formed, you can then plop it out onto your clean counter like so. And then um, this process, you're now gonna um, shape it into uh, a ball um, with a, t a tight skin around it, uh, so it really kind of ha holds, its, holds its shape. And um, with a really wet dough, you could use a dough blade, um, even a drywall knife, if it's clean, obviously, um, can help. And I'll show you that technique in just a second, but usually you can use your hands. You actually don't need to flour the surface, uh, it just needs to be a clean surface. Um, but you could, it doesn't, you just don't really need to flour the surface. So for this, um, the movement, you're going to be spinning the ball around like as if it was on a potter's wheel, but you're also going to be pushing down onto the counter while with the bottom part of your hand scooping under. So it's like you're trying to create this drum skin around the dough ball to make a ball. So you'll see right now, if I bring this over, that the dough just has this sort of kind of lumpy, plopped out dough look. Um, but look what happens with a little bit of shaping. So, so you, you kind of have to do it quite fast because otherwise the dough sticks to your hands. So just a slow-mo, I'm kind of going like this, round and tuck under a little bit. So I'll try and do it slow, but you've got to pull away quickly because it, otherwise it sticks to your hands. So this is the, one of the few bits that really takes a little bit of practice um, but once you get it, um, it uh, it's not so tricky. So look at that, just that little bit of shaping and see how now it's round, it's got some height to it and the skin is kind of smooth and, and drum-like. So that's what you're going for with the bool. So it's done one rise and then it will now do its uh, second and final rise and you'll need a proofing basket. You could use a, um, a dish towel in a bowl, which is kind of a rough method, or actually a a proper proofing basket, and they come in two kinds. One is just sort of a, a wicker, like a wicker, like that. The other has this sort of linen, um, I don't know, kind of covering, and either works fine, and you can use it whatever you like, really. But I can't, this one is kind of this nice ring mark, so that's what I'll use. I'm gonna grab my flour. It, whether you use the, the line proofing basket, or just a raw wicker, wicker one, you need to put a healthy amount of flour, um, just a handful, um, into the, the proofing basket. So th this is what prevents it from, from sticking. Um, I mean, obviously you can do too much, but better to go heavy than, than with the flour than to have it be stuck. So I've got my bowl, and then what you do with the bowl is you take it, and this is smooth part is actually gonna be flipped over into the proofing basket and I'm gonna have the rough bit that right now is on the bottom of the counter facing up. So I'm gonna pick it up gently and I'm gonna plop it into my proofing basket. And sometimes I'll just kind of pinch together on the top if there's any kind of weird bits. I'll uh, pinch it together, just as a nice smooth surface. And there we have it. There's the, um, the shaped bool uh, in the proofing basket. It's gonna do its second rise, which is much shorter than the first rise. And just like with the first tries, I like to let this go, um, get a little bit of heat. 
So what I do is you could use a plate to cover this. Um, I actually just use the mixing bowl that I used before. Um, and so I'm gonna cover my proofing basket. This just keeps the air off it so it doesn't uh, harden prematurely. And uh, once again, I'm gonna set my oven to 170. That's the lowest my oven goes. Uh, and let it get to temp and then I'll bring it, you know, open the door and let it get down to like 150 or so. And I'm gonna put this uh, set up with the, the proofing basket with the shaped bool and a cover. I'm gonna put it in the oven, uh, just with, uh, in a warm oven or, or warming oven if you have one, uh, to let it do its second rise, which should take about, about two hours. And then at the two hour mark, then we'll do the final stage, which will be the baking of the bread. So there'll be your, the next video will show the steps for turning the boule out of the proofing basket uh, and getting it into your hot Dutch oven and then the steps for cooking. So, um, yeah. Oh, and just to be clear, I don't leave the oven on while it's raising, just, just to get it warm initially for the, for the second rise.